Okay, all right. We come back to uh, the third uh, clip on the uh, the uh, three-phase short circuit analysis, right? In this lecture, we are going to uh, we are going to develop the uh, a generalized uh, approach to analyze uh, the three-phase short circuit. We start by making uh, a few important assumptions to make uh, uh, our calculation more simple, right? In this case, uh, we're going to make the uh, assumptions on each of the tr uh, power system equipments, right? Namely, uh, transformer, transmission line, synchronous machine, and induction motor, okay? So uh, you can see obviously that, you know, the source of the uh, uh, energy in power system mostly comes from the synchronous machine and the uh, most of the loads are represented by induction motor, right? And, and you know, uh, the transformer itself, uh, in this case, is represented by the leakage reactants. So we normally have, the, especially when we talk about the very large transformer in transmission systems. So normally we uh, express, right, when we have in the power system analysis, we normally express the transformer by uh, just a single reactants. In this case, we call leakage reactants. So the winding, right, uh, resistance, chan admittance, and the phase shifting due to the you know different kinds of connections in primary and secondaries are neglected. So this basically this is a simplified model of a power transformer. Okay. Number two, the number two assumption number two is about the transmission lines. So the lines are represented by the uh, their equivalent series reactants. So the line itself is also represented by reactants. So the uh, shunt resistance and uh, shunt admittances are neglected, right? Uh, especially when we have very, uh, I mean, in the uh, bow power transmission, right? The, the resistance are obviously it is it must be omitted, right? Because the resistant part, resistive part of the transmission line is normally much less than the you know reactance part. Okay, and the shunt admittances are neglected. If you still remember, uh, right, uh, the model of the transmission line is like this. So we basically, we just neglect this resistive part and we also neglected this, uh, you know, uh, the res uh, capacitive part. This is normally, the, uh, you know, represented by the, the half of the conductance. Right, uh, we neglect these two parts. Whereby, you know, uh, if you still remember uh, a little bit, let me revise. Uh, you know, refresh your your memory a little bit. Right, this is the uh, equivalent circuit of the transform. Okay, this is the primary part, and this is secondary. So the secondary itself, you also have uh, RL on both uh, uh, parts. So this is the uh, you know, this is the copper, right? This is the wire of the inside the uh, primary, and this is the wire in, in the secondary, right? So these, uh, these uh, magnetizing losses are uh, not usually can be neglected, right? So uh, that's why we have deduced this uh, uh, full model to just the simplified model for the power transmission, uh, power transformers. Okay, we just made the simple, sim simple uh, assumptions. Right, the synchronous machine and the motors are represented in the same fashion as the um, uh, constant voltage source behind subtension reactances. Right, this is the same for both the synchronous machine and the induction machine. So, this is what we have seen from from the the past two examples that we uh, model the um, uh, the equipments of power system also in this kind of uh, assumptions. Right. So in this case, uh, we are going to analyze the short circuit by uh, uh, using the uh, feminine method, right? From the single line diagram, as we can see here, right? The single line diagram connected between the uh, 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 generator and the motor, right? And we have assumed, right, a three-phase short circuit somewhere along this line. So if you can see uh, correctly, uh, precisely, right, uh, the first example that I discussed was that, you know, the three-phase fault just happened uh, at the terminal of, uh, of the motor, right, at the motor. Uh, so in this case, it's just the same as a single line diagram shown here, okay? 
So these are the requirements, right? We have given the uh, single line diagram, so we just draw the equivalent circuit at the pre-fall state. So this is right before the fall happened. So we, we can see that in this case, right, from this uh, uh, single line diagram, if you write the uh, equivalent circuit, right, now we, we see that this is the circuit because this is the closed path, right? Uh, the current flow from source and come back to, to the load. This is the pre-fall uh, state because in this case, there is no short circuit path to the ground, right? If there is a fall, then this is the ground and there is a short path between the, the, the point of fault to the ground. So this is the pre-fall condition. So at the pre-fall state, you can see that the uh, VF, which is the, the fault, right, the, at the, sorry, at the voltage at the faulted point is essentially equal to uh, the terminal voltage of the motor. This is the terminal, right? The, okay, this is the terminal of the motor. So the current flowing uh, from the source to the load Okay, so the current just uh, flows from uh, the, the generator to the motor. Okay, so this, as you can see at the, at the normal uh, pre fall or the pre fall current, okay, the uh, IG, which is the, uh, the, the current flowing from the source, is essentially negative of the IM if you uh, use the, the convention of the machine, right? You can see that you know. Since uh, the, if you assume that the machine just gives the current going out of the machine, going out of the terminal of the machine, but uh, this is the normal, right? For the, I mean, if you look at machine at the, the generator, the current as a source will flow out of the machine, okay? And if you look at the uh, uh, motor, right? Since the motor, we have to take the current inside and we generate the mechanical power output. Right, so the current has to you know flow into the to the machine. So the IG is negative of IM. This is clear, right? And uh, if we try to model uh, at the pre-fall state, if we just include the the you know the voltage source over here, we F and we assume that there is no current flowing. Uh, through this both source. So basically these two circuits are the same if you can see, right? Because this is the VF is the voltage drop across these two points But it's also, you know, it's essentially equal to the uh, terminal voltage of the motor Okay, so there is no harm, you know, to introduce the another uh, voltage source with no current flow So these two pictures is also equivalent Right, these two are equivalent. Okay, you may wonder why we have to introduce such kinds of, you know, uh, the 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 voltage source here. That that, that, that is a reason. So to, to be explained later on, right? Um, now we analyze the uh, the equivalent circuit during the fault. You can see we use the term circuit because this is a closed path, right? Um, we have introduced uh, the fall to the terminal, so we can see that we add the uh, you know uh, voltage source Vt in the opposite polarity uh, to the to the uh, voltage, right? So that the, uh, the the voltage at this point. So if we introduce the fall at this position, meaning that there is a uh, uh, you know a short path going directly to the ground, so. If you connect this direct, this point right directly to the ground, meaning that there is no voltage drop across these two terminals, right? So you can see that you know the the same effect. You can see uh, if you introduce the fault at this position, so there is no voltage drop across this. Okay. Previously, we have um, uh, assumed that uh, there is a, a voltage uh, source at this point with no current flow. Right. Soon after you introduce the fall, that means that there is another voltage source with the equal magnitude but different signs, right? Uh, connected in series between these two, so that you know there is a uh, no voltage uh, drop across these two terminals. So uh, all the the voltage across these two points is essentially zero, right? So this is the circuit at the fault. Okay, this is the circuit during the fault. Okay. So, so we have 
uh, model the the circuit during the fall by you know introducing the uh, the voltage source with the same magnitude but different uh, direction. Okay, this is the during the short circuit. Okay, so now there is a you know short circuit already at this uh, uh, point. Okay, so the the current that flows in this circuit is okay the uh, the flow the, the current that flows on uh, in this circuits are the fault current okay so that's that's why you can see that uh, the the currents in this uh, in this circuit right it with it's represented by you know the double prime superscription right so this is the uh, these are the uh, currents during the subtraction period Okay, these are the current at the during the subtraction period. Okay, so this picture is the same as you know the picture on on the right side, as you can see, because this is the short path, so the voltage across these two points is zero, and there is a current flow in this case, so you can see that uh, the current right uh, flowing from the source, which is the IG double prime. As we can, as we have seen earlier in this, uh, in in the in the other example, that uh, this is the the fault, the contribution of the fault current due to the, the generator, right? And the I M double prime here is called the the fault current, which is which is contributed by the motor. So you can see from this picture that uh, the I F double prime. And this is the IG double prime. If you KCL at this position, now you can see that IF double prime is the sum of these two. So you can you can see that this is right uh, IG plus IM. Okay, IG plus IM. Okay. So now you can see that the IF is uh, called subtraction fault current. IG double prime is called subtraction generator current, or this is the fault current due to the generator. Okay, I M double prime is the sub transient motor current or the contribution of motor to the fault current. Okay, so now uh, you use the superposition, okay, uh, to this circuit, okay, because this we analyze the uh, what we happen during the fault. Okay, we have we want to analyze. You still remember our goal is you know uh, the our Go out. The goal of our analysis is to find the IF double prime. Okay, we want to solve for this. How much is it? Okay, so we have to analyze the circuit during the fault. So, if you use the, the superposition, now you can decompose this into two pictures. Okay, this is the picture one and the picture two by using the superposition because you know we have several uh, uh, both sources. Right. So if you apply therefore uh, superposition to this picture, we, you see that we have four voltage sources in this picture. Right. So we decompose into uh, picture number one and picture number two. The picture number one just got uh, 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 one voltage source, while the uh, picture number two just got three voltage sources. Okay. So altogether we have four sources. Okay. So. What does this uh, picture on the left re represent? Okay, and what is the meaning of the the, the picture on the right? Okay. <coughs> okay, so I'm sorry. Now you can see that uh, if, if if you see the picture on on to the right, you still remember uh, the voltage source in this blue color. Okay, in this blue color and with the notation of I F equal to zero. Now you can see that uh, this is the pre-fault circuit. Okay, this is the pre-fault circuit. This pre-fault circuit would be the same as you know. Uh, that if you remove this, you can forget about this. You can remove this one, which is this picture. Okay, this is the this is the picture. Okay, the same picture on on uh, uh, down below, right? So now you 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 see that uh, this is the pre-fault circuit. Okay, and if you look on to, to on to the left, okay, this is the Thevenin equivalence with uh, the four current inside here because uh, this is if if you if you design this is the uh, pre four states right so pre four state there is no four current flows on, along this along this short route okay so uh, the 
on, the picture on the left would represent you know the the Thevenin circuit during the fall because this is the uh, IF one double prime. Okay, so if you use superposition means that your IF double prime or this is the fall the total fall current would be IF one plus IF two, right? This is the, the sum of these two. You know that this is zero already. So the, the, your final IF here would be determined by the, the picture number one. Okay. So this is the picture. The picture number one right here is the picture that we 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 we're gonna use to find the, the fall uh, current. Okay. So this is the pre-fall state. So now this is the during the fall state. Okay by applying the, the, the superposition theorem. So now you can see that if we want to calculate the, the, the fall current, right, we just re, uh, use the picture on the left side. Okay, the picture on to the left, you see that uh, if you want to analyze the IF, this is become zero. I have uh, written already, right? Um, oh, sorry, uh, the IF2 is zero because this is the pre-fall state, right? Now we just analyze the, 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 the picture on the left. In the picture on the left, you see well, how you would uh, find the IF1 double prime. It is uh, from the Thevenin uh, theorem, right? You can see that the current flows in this, uh, in, in, in this uh, you know, route is determined from the uh, Thevenin voltage at this point, right? You, if you look at this point, you just find the VTH at this point, right? Which is VTH in this case, it is VF because we are looking at uh, at this 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 point, okay? And uh, and divided by CTH. Now the question is that how you would you you would determine this CTH, right? You have to redraw this uh, picture a little bit, right? Be in order to find the uh, uh, you know just reverse the, the, the direction of the of the uh, voltage source over here right from vf we just redraw this picture from uh, uh, i mean the voltage source here used to be negative uh, on, at the top and the positive on the bottom you just reverse it so the, 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 there's no change right just reverse the direction of the current flow now you can see that you see, uh, if you reverse the current here, the current uh, IF, right, would be the voltage divider of these two, okay? And now, you just find the CTH, right, from this, from the second picture. If you want to find the uh, Thevenin uh, impedance from this point, right, what you can have to do is that you just remove uh, uh, the, 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 or you, you have to de deactivate the source here. So I just remove this uh, source like this, right? And you look, you stand over here and you look inside into this port, right? The, uh, the reactance you see is the equivalent, uh, uh, you know, uh, set TH, right? If you stand over here, you see, right? Uh, the set TH would be determined from the, the parallel connection between XM and the series of these two. Okay, the series of these two. So you would, you would be able to determine this CTH from the uh, X equivalence would be the XM in parallel to XG plus XL, right? So the, your CTH is, is determined from this expression over here and you find the CTH and you just, you know, put it back to this uh, uh, equation, right? You can, you can determine the VF just like this, okay? Now it's a question how much is the uh, VF or, you know, the, uh, the uh, voltage at the faulted point. This is, uh, this is, this has been done in the, in, in the example already, right? The VF here is usually determined from the uh, 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 the pre-fall condition. Okay, we will look at the example. Okay, once you know the IF from the previous calculation, so you can find you know the IG and IM, right? You can find the IG and IM normally is from the uh, uh, the current division, 
okay you find the ig and i if you want to find the the contribution the total contribution you can just you know put uh the the load current right you can see this is the this is a normal procedure right you can see that this is the number two the subscription number two right is from the uh, pre false state okay from the pre false state okay now you can see that the pre false state the if pre fault is zero because there is no fault right the ig the current flown in uh, the pre fault uh, circuit right that definitely it's it's there okay it's there because if you look at the uh, circuit number two okay you can see that the 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 il itself is the ig right uh, okay the, the 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 load current is the it's the ig because the current just flow from the generator to the load the im in this picture is negative of the il okay so you can you can see this is the uh, the circuit during the fault okay during the fault and this is the total fault current and this is the uh, the contribution from generator and motor to the fault current okay you see what I mean uh, in in, uh, in this example, right? This example just like it's more or less like the the, the example we discussed in uh, earlier, right? The example here is uh, number seven point three from uh, the Glo from Glover and Summer. Okay, this is from Glover and Summer book. Okay, uh, the three-phase short circuit current and uh, and in the power system. So we have the um, simple power system, right? The generator uh, on the on the left side and it's connected wire transformer. We have a step up step up transformer by the the ratio of one to ten. Okay, uh, initially the generator operates at the operating at the rate in MVA okay and power factor of uh, 0.95 lagging and the voltage is 500 5 percent above the rated voltage so it means that the uh, the pre fault condition of this the voltage is 1.05 pu okay when the voltage fall uh, just occur at bus one so the 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 voltage just uh, there is a, a three-phase fall at the terminal of the generator so the problem asks you to calculate the per unit uh, values of the subtransient fault current. So this is the IF subtransient fault current, IF double prime, okay, subtransient generator and motor current. So this is the IG, okay. So everybody knows that this is IG, and motor current is IM double prime. Okay, I am double prime. Uh, neglecting pre fault current. So neglecting pre fault current means that we have to neglect the the pre fault current. We neglect the the load current. Okay, there is no load current, uh, right? In this case, we we, we just uh, uh, neglect this uh, the load current first. And uh, uh, question C, right? Subtransient generator uh, and motor current, including pre fault current pre fault current means that now in this case you have to take the load current into consideration all right this is this is quite clear okay and you can analyze from the single light diagram we start with the uh, single light diagram like this now the problem just specifying that the vf is 1.05 uh, pu and we use the um, uh, 100 MVA base okay because at uh, I mean the rate that we, we refer to is is the generator okay now with the 100 MVA base the base impedance for transmission line okay because we need to uh, convert this uh, trans transmission line parameter given in ohms right we, we, we're gonna work all the way in, in in per unit system so we we got to uh, convert this uh, 20 ohms into uh, how, how much per unit it is so we just determine the c base in this case right so we can see that the c base itself is v base uh, square right v square divided by s base so this is uh, 138 
kV square divided by uh, 100 MVA. So this is kV square and this is in MVA. Okay, so you have you can have uh, 190.44 ohms. 190.44 you give uh, I mean the problem give uh, 20 ohms. So this is how much percent it is. So you can see that it is about 10% uh, or 0.105 uh, per unit, right? This is the how much in, in per unit. So soon after this, you, you we draw the equivalent circuit at pre fault states. You can see that uh, the fault is simulated uh, as the norm in O, right? Normally open switch, right? Soon after that, you have the fault. You just kick in the switch, and this is the short circuit to the ground. Okay. So this is uh, at the pre fault states. Okay. And this is the generator terminal of the generator. We have introduced the fault at the terminal of the generator. So, in this case, you have converted the transmission line right into per unit, which is 0.1 pu. I'm sorry, this is the transformer. Transformer is given. Okay, transformer is given. Uh, all right, transformer is here. Is given 0.1 uh, pu, which with, with with the same base. You can see because this is 100 MVA uh, one. Uh, th I mean 13.8 kV, right? And uh, the x is here, is given. So we normally assume that the the the, the re I mean the reactance, the leakage re leakage reactance of the transformer is on the primary side. So the this is there is no need to convert the per unit. So it's right. This is the J point one pu. Okay. This is the line. The this is the transformer two, and this is the machine. I, or, or, I mean motor, right? Now, uh, I mean all the uh, uh, symbols are explained, so I don't need to 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 ex re explain, right? So this is the normal assumption. This is a common assumption that we normally made. I have explained it in in another clip, right? That we normally assume that the voltage source is constant, so the internal EMF of the machine is constant due to the constant flux theory. So this is assumed constant. So the EG, so this EG and EM are assumed to be constant during the fault, right? This is the uh, equivalent circuit during the fault when there is a, uh, I mean, there is a fault introduced, right? There is the the voltage source right connected to back to back the same uh, voltage source connected with the uh, you know opposite direction right you just twist the voltage source and connect to this so this is the uh, the short part because the the boat I mean the the voltage drop right from point one to ground is become become zero okay this is during the fault the fault is represented by two opposing voltage sources with equal phase of voltage. Okay, this is the, the, the during fault circuit. So we have we have to analyze the uh, the super uh, the mean the fault current using the superposition. So uh, we decompose this picture into two. You still remember we have uh, the pre fault states on on the right side num number two. Okay, and the pre fault state you have E G and E M intact, and there is the fault current in this case the the fault uh, I F two is zero. Okay, now in this case you can analyze right the IG and IM. Okay, you can find the IG and IM. You can you can use the you know normal circuit theory to analyze this one. Okay, so you can see that as such the IF two is zero. VF has no effect, so we can remove this uh, voltage source out of this picture. Okay, so your VF is, is equal to the pre fault voltage at the fault. Okay, and we can analyze. Right? We will we, we, we'll spend our focus on 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 the, on the left circuit. Okay, we we will see from the the, the left circuit. Okay, now uh, in this slide we just uh, show the, uh, the 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 superposition of the of the two uh, sub circuits again, right? Now. We, we have seen that this is a normal operating condition on the right, so we just eliminate this uh, this branch, right? You can find the you know IL from in this case, and the IF here, right, is equal to IF uh, one from the circuit one. Since this is a pre fault state, there is no fault. We just uh, stick to to the to the left circuit, okay? 
the left circuit. So the Vf here is said to be equal to the preformed voltage uh, uh, at the faulted point. Okay. Now you have to analyze, right? In order to to analyze the the left side, you have to know uh, the voltage at this point before the fault, and we just assume that you know uh, the the voltage at this point is uh, doesn't change, right? Doesn't change uh, when the when the fault just happen, okay? Because we we are discussing uh, in the sub transient right duration, so it's very short period. So this is right after the, the fault, okay? So now the way we calculate this, right? We 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 calculate the fault current. Uh, from this fact that the IF double prime is just equal to IF1, okay. Now we we can uh, play around a little bit with this uh, uh, the picture the the circuit on the left, right? We just redraw. This is basically just the same uh, 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 circuit from the left, but we just change the uh, the, the direction of the the fault current. Okay, the fault current we just uh, change the uh, direction. Uh, I mean the polarity from negative to positive, right? Negative on top, positive down. We just change the direction. So when we change the positive sign, we change also the the flow of the current, right? The direction of the current flow. So you can see that uh, in from this case, if you uh, you know if you can analyze the the fault uh, current I F here. Right, you want to find the IG and the, the IM, right? You can find uh, you can find it easily by using the current division. Okay, soon after you know this, you just divide the current into two roots, right? That is pretty simple. Okay. Uh, now the question left, you know, you, you know that the IF one in this case, right, which is the VF. Right, divided by the CTH. Right, the VF here is defined by the prefall voltage. Okay, the prefall voltage you can you can just analyze this from from the uh, the original circuit. Okay, but now the, the problem is how to what is the, the the CTH? Right, the CTH is pretty simple. Right, you just deactivate this source or you you know by doing this you just remove the voltage source and and you know you look at these two points right how, uh, how much the impedance you can see right now you, you see from this picture you remove the voltage source you see that these two uh, reactances are in are in parallel okay these two reactances are in parallel so the equivalent circuit the equivalent uh, reactance is uh, is the you know the parallel of these two Okay, the parallel of these two is, you know, it's determined that from the uh, from this product, right? The multiplication divided by the summation, so you can get uh, J zero uh, point zero point one one five six. You can get this much, right? This is the CTH and the pre four voltage at this point, right? Since the uh, the the fault. Where was the, the location of the fault? The location of the fault is at the voltage terminal, right? The voltage terminal. At this uh, voltage terminal, the pre fault state right, is, is already given that, you know, uh, the generator right, is operating at 5% above the rated voltage. So at this point, right, before the fault, the, the, the problem already gave that, you know, uh, the the voltage terminal or the, the at this point is 1.05 PU. This is the prefall voltage, right? At this location. So luckily the 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 the, the, the fault location is the same as uh, you know uh, at this uh, you know pre 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 fall uh, state, right? It, it it might be possible, you know, if I change the the uh, the, the, the location of the fault to for example at the terminal of the of the motor right in this case you have to analyze it okay you have to use the circuit theory to find this vtm first okay and you use this vtm as your vf in the fault calculation right 
So this is uh, you know just for the suggestion. Okay, you can you can you can uh, you can think of you know how to analyze uh, this, or you can refer to uh, the example that we, I, I have showed earlier, right? Now you can see that the VF is given 1.05, right? So the subtraction for current is uh, determined from the from this equation. Right? So you can get 1.05 angle of zero divided by the, uh, the, the 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 CTH. So you can see that you know the fall, total fall current is negative J uh, 9.07, right? Uh, per, per unit. Now you can find the IG. And I am by using this uh, current division, so it's pretty straightforward, right? Now you see the IG here is the ratio of this, the opposite ratio, right? You see this is the uh, 0.505 divided by the sum, or you can refer to this picture, right? You see, you want to find the IG one, right? Uh, that's why you can see uh, this is the ratio. 77% of the total fall current though so this is the negative j uh, per unit so the i am here okay the, from this picture itself you can also see that the sum of the ig and i am is equal to if right so the i am if this is 77% uh, this is becomes 23% uh, roughly right so this is the 20% of the total fall current uh, 9.079 per unit so you can have a uh, uh, negative j 2.08 per unit roughly okay this is the the subtraction for uh, current right the subtraction generator current subtraction model current okay if you want to include the pre fall current right we just just determine you can you, you remember this is the uh, answer to question B because we neglect the pre-fall uh, current. If you include the pre-fall current, what you have to do is that you have to uh, include the current uh, from the pre-fall state. Okay. Now you have to analyze the circuit uh, before the fault. Okay. You you have to analyze the circuit before the fault. Now you can see that the circuit be before the fault, it's Determine that from this case, from this picture, okay, from this picture, okay. Now you, you see uh, the uh, the current is just uh, in this fashion, right? The IG, you if you see from this case, IG one plus IG two, you see that the IG one, this is the during the fall, you have you have already uh, determined that, right? This is around negative J uh, seven something, right? Seven. And this is negative j, sorry, uh, two point, right? Two point something zero eight pu, right? In this in this direction, right? Once you uh, want to include these two, right? And this is this is the pre fall state. So the current during the pre fall state, you remember the cu the current just flow from generator to the load, right? And the current will flow in this way. So your I M two is you know flowing in this way okay so your i m2 is what is negative of this i load okay it's just negative of this i load so that's why you can see i m2 is negative of this i load okay now the question left is that you have to analyze this this circuit okay now it's it, it is easy since you deal with uh, in in everything is in per unit right from power system one, from basic power system, right? If you work everything, if you calculate everything in per unit, okay? The current in per unit is the same, no matter how you are, I mean, no matter where you are in the system, at which, at which voltage level, it doesn't matter. The voltage, I mean, the current is the same, okay? The percentage is the same, okay? Now, you can determine the IL, right? IL here is the same current flowing from the source to the load, but of course it's not it's not the same if you if you are talking about in, in real quantity, okay? Because this is this uh, this is the different currents in different voltage, okay? 
but since you work everything in per unit it's it's the, it's the same throughout okay now you can analyze right the, the problem says that uh, the generator just uh, operate in in the falling condition right the, the i mean the problem just give you the the loading current the loading condition of this uh, of the machine right which is the current flow in this zone right once you have calculated if you know if you happen to know the the current flows in per unit how much of the the current give, given by this generator in pu right it is the same right throughout the other zones okay it's the same in terms of per unit okay the figure is the same but of course the number is different the actual value is different because the the the, the base current in these zones are different okay so you have to deal with this uh, current calculation right uh, this is pretty simple you can just uh, determine this from the the rated uh, mva this is 100 mva given right and this is the vll here is a rating uh, sorry this is the, the the operating condition right in this case this is 1.05 pu right because it's operating at five percent above the nominal okay and uh, il here uh, you have to take since this is the phaser so you have to put the the, the angle as well this is the this is how you, you could calculate okay you you can just determine this from from the uh, 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 this equation, this kind of equation, right? The IL itself is the base MVA, 100 MVA divided by root 3 times the, the, the voltage condition, which is 5% above the nominal. So the nominal is 13.8 kV. And the problem says that the generator operates at uh, 0.95 uh, PU, right? 0.95 PU lacking. Lacking means that the angle is negative, okay? This is important. The, the the lacking the angle is negative. Okay, if you still don't understand, so you can draw this picture. You have zero as a reference, and the the i just i just lack v. So the uh, the 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 angle of this current is negative because you know when you measure the the, the angle out uh, clockwise, right? Um, the the pos the negative side has to be assume right this is the negative sign so you have negative 18.19 uh, uh, degree right and the angle of this much and you have to normalize this in terms of in into per unit okay this is how much in per unit you divide by the the base okay the base is 100 divided by root 3 times uh, 13.8 kb the base is 4.1837 so you have determined that Okay, 3.98 kilo amps divided by the 4.18. So you have you have this uh, 0.9524. Okay, uh, PU. Okay, so you have IL here, right? So your IL this is in 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 phase, okay, in polar form. Okay, you can uh, convert this into Cartesian coordinate or rectangular form. Once you have this uh, in rectangular, so uh, this is the, the IL. Okay, you want to 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 sum this uh, this IL, or you have to subtract this IL from from the IGA and the IM. Okay, so now you can uh, find the subtraction generator and the motor current when you include right when you include the pre-fall current. Okay, the the uh, subtraction generator current is IG one double prime. Okay, this is during the fall, and this is pre uh, pre fall before the fault. Okay, before the fault, the uh, the the current is this much. So you just sum these two, right? You get this this one. Okay, and the I M, right? The total uh, motor subtraction uh, motor current, right? I M double prime minus I L. Okay, this is can be done right this is, can be done so remember this is negative sign because of the different directions right so you can see okay uh, this is the, the, the this is the way we, 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 we can analyze it now you can have some observation
okay you can see that this is the fault current this these two are the fault current okay the fault current is in uh, uh, has just you know uh, 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 reactive part right or the imaginary part okay if you compare between the imaginary part of uh, the the pre fault current which is here okay and the fault current you can see this is so much different right these are so much different this is 700 percent this is just how much 29 percent you can see this is a uh, this this can be you know uh, neglected in reality okay okay you can see the degree of the fault current and the pre fault current so in most of the calculation right you can you know simply omit this this case okay and once you you, you can see you, once you you sum up these two right uh, the the magnitude of this is just almost the same as the the um, the, 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 the the fault current without uh, uh, pre fault current we have pre fault condition okay this is, I think this is all, right? We, we have uh, analyzed uh, almost everything with the, with the pre-fall, uh, I mean the uh, three-phase short circuit, okay? So next video clip, okay, I, we, we, we will discuss the uh, unsymmetrical fault. We will start with unsymmetrical fault by talking about the, uh, the tools that we, we will uh, use for analyzing unsymmetrical fault, which is a symmetrical component. So we will see you in the next video clip. Thank you.